All right, today we're talking about compound machines. Now a compound machine is defined as a machine that is comprised of two or more simple machines. Now, if you don't know about simple machines or you wanna find out more about simple machines, click up here. Now, anytime we combine multiple simple machines, we wind up with what we call a compound machine. Uh, this could be something like a wheelbarrow or a wine opener or a crane. Uh, those are all simple machines that have been combined into a compound machine. Now today I'm going to look at something that is a little bit less practical or a little bit less uh, familiar. And this is simply a lever connected to a pulley. These are two separate simple machines and they've been combined into one compound machine. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and we're going to solve for the total IMA or the ideal mechanical advantage of this entire assembly. Now in looking at this compound machine, there's an input force on the end of this lever, and that lever is free to pivot around this point over here. Now partway along this lever, there's a string attached to the lever, and that string runs over a pulley to a fixed point, which causes this pulley to move up and down as the lever moves up and down. Now because this is a pulley providing some mechanical advantage, uh, we're going to have to worry about exactly how far this load will move as a function of how far we pull this end of the lever. Or really what we're trying to do is figure out the IMA of this compound machine. Now in order to find the IMA of a compound machine, we need to look at the IMA or the ideal mechanical advantage of each individual simple machine within the compound machine. So here we have a lever, and we're going to have to work out the IMA for that. And then separately we have a pulley, and we're going to need to work out the IMA for that pulley. And once we have the IMA of both of these simple machines, I'll show you how to combine them to get the total IMA of this entire compound machine. So first let's look at the lever. Uh, we have a lever with an input force over here. And while the load is over here, not actually attached to the lever, if we look at how the load interacts with the pulley, you'll see that this string right here attached to the lever is effectively the output for our lever as it relates to the compound machine. So really we have an input and an output. And you remember the IMA for a lever is given by the distance in or the input length of the lever divided by the output length of the lever. So in this case, that's going to be 12 over four. So the IMA or the ideal mechanical advantage of the lever on its own is simply three. Now the pulley, you'll remember in looking at pulleys, the IMA of a pulley is simply how many strands are connected to the active end of the pulley. That means our pulley has an IMA of two. Now, anytime we're dealing with a compound machine, the total ideal mechanical advantage of that compound machine is simply the product of the IMAs of each of the simple machines that make up that compound machine. That is to say, we just multiply together the IMAs of the lever and the IMA of the pulley. So in this problem, that's three multiplied by two, which gives us a total IMA of six. So this total IMA of six is telling us that if we push the end of this lever a certain distance, this load is only going to move one sixth as far. Now, ideally in a perfect world, that means if we put a certain force in on this end of the lever, we're gonna get six times as much force out on the other end of the lever. Now, that operates on the assumption that this entire compound machine is 100% efficient. So what happens if this entire machine is not 100% efficient? Well, let's go ahead and say the lever has some inefficiency to it. Let's say the lever is only 90% efficient. And let's say the pulley is 80% efficient. Knowing the efficiency of each individual simple machine, we can go through and find the total efficiency of the entire compound machine and therefore the actual mechanical advantage of this compound machine. 
To find the overall efficiency of the compound machine, all we need to do is simply multiply together these two efficiencies to get the total efficiency. Now remember, we need to enter in our efficiencies as decimals, not as percents. And we find our total efficiency is 72%. So if we want to find the total AMA, or the actual mechanical advantage of our compound machine, we need to go back to our relationship between percent efficiency and IMA. And in plugging in our percent efficiency as well as our IMA, we find the actual mechanical advantage is 4.3. So knowing both the IMA and the AMA, we can go through and find both the distance we would need to move the end of this lever in order to lift the load a certain distance. We can also find how much load or how heavy of a load we could lift for a given force. Now each compound machine is unique in its own way. Uh, this was just one example. There's lots of different compound machines and they all have to be solved in their own way because they all use their own separate arrangement of simple machines. But what we should see here today is that to find the total IMA of any compound machine, we simply multiply together the IMAs of all the individual simple machines which make up that compound machine. In a similar manner to find the overall efficiency of the compound machine, we simply multiply together the efficiencies of each individual simple machine. So that is how we calculate the IMA and AMA of a compound machine. And that's all for now.